Uh, that is the president's uh, attempt uh, to be the reasonable man, even though on November 6, uh, 2012, America spoke soundly and loudly uh, that the idea of protecting the safety net of Medicare, Medicaid, uh, Social Security uh, is vital. Uh, I add to that unemployment uh, insurance in terms of those who uh, have been looking for jobs. Uh, that is crucial. We have a lot of young started out with a job, uh, then may not have had it. Please know that unemployment insurance is that. It is an insurance. It's not a handout. It's a hand up. Do you realize that all of this would be wiped out with the proposal uh, that our friends insist on keeping when economists will tell you several things? Uh, first of all, uh, there is no uh, documentation uh, that, in fact, uh, if you keep the cuts, you'll create jobs. It, there, there just isn't any basis for that. First of all, we take care of 97 percent of small businesses with income under $250,000. Go up and down the streets of America uh, on Small Business Day and ask these small businesses what their income is, not what they take in and pay employees, etc. They will not pay any taxes on income of $250,000. And then if you are a hardworking 80,000 salaried person, uh, two, two families, uh, two workers in the family, 40,000, 40,000, 80,000. If you make 250, if you make 15 billion in salaried or in income, you will get a tax cut of $250,000. Is that not the reasonable man and woman standard? Is that not reasonable? Let me tell you why that's reasonable. Because as I said, most economists will tell you that first of all, uh, that uh, cutting uh, spending is not the answer in a recession uh, as relates to uh, the deficit. And so we're not uh, insensitive to the deficit. We want to have a reasoned response to the deficit. The crisis is to ensure that middle America and low-income Americans and young people with their start-off jobs making a certain amount of money do not have uh, enormous, uh, if you will, tax increase uh, as they go into 2013. Be very sure now this whole thing about going downhill this because uh, it's something of a slide. All of these things don't happen right at 2013. We have the time to be reasonable, to deal with the tax cuts, uh, to save people from having increases, meaning those earning 250000 below. And for the blessed uh, and well-to-do, let me just say this is not any punitive measure in suggesting that we don't uh, have the respect for people's wealth and well-to-do. What we're saying is where there's mutual benefit, there's a mutual burden. And I haven't heard a cry out from anybody to say that they would not uh, welcome that balance. So then we have the opportunity, even though the president's put on the table, as the gentleman from the Virginia said, of $400 billion, uh, he indicates $480 billion on the table. This whole uh, boogeyman about entitlement reform is such a straw man. It's just something to throw out uh, to the American people as if the people that are on Medicare uh, and Medicaid and Social Security are entitled near do well. That is not true. The people who get Medicare and Medicaid, Social Security, even unemployment insurance, are people who have worked. They have worked. They have earned this. Now, there are many ways that we can look at these elements going forward. Uh, but the idea that we would throw this on the altar sacrifice and cloud people's minds and tell them uh, that they are, in fact, um, going to be the, 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 the life or uh, the answer of whether or not our good friends come on the other side of the aisle. Let me just say this. Uh, join us on the other side of the aisle and do this reasonable act of cutting uh, the taxes of 100% of, of Americans uh, and eliminating the Bush uh, tax cuts uh, for uh, the 1 and 2 percent. Let me just tell you, for those who uh, think that uh, they don't mind uh, the cliff, I'm not sure who's been saying that and I respect them for it, uh, but um, said I wasn't going to say that, but you're talking about uh, increasing uh, taxes, uh, you're talking about um, uh, causing the loss of jobs, increasing taxes about $3,000 uh, on uh, the average family, you're talking about increasing unemployment from 7 percent, 7.9 percent, to about 9.1 percent. Uh, this is what we're playing with. But let me just give you something else. The tax cuts that we have been paying for 
already over a ten year period the extension would cost two point four trillion dollars and if anybody is serious about cutting the deficit how nonsensical how what 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 sense does that make to continue these cuts if they could document for me how these create jobs then maybe we would be able to respond to it does anybody realize and recognize that hurricane sandy came through that one of the mayors of one of the largest cities just were here this week asking for an enormous infusion of dollars of which we are merciful and recognize the role of the federal government why are we stalling on a simple process of eliminating the bush tax cuts of two percent of the individuals who have been particularly silent because they recognize benefit and burden and for our corporations who uh, I have the greatest respect uh, for capitalism, are presently flush with cash. Let me tell you what the instability is. The corporations, the businesses are saying, tell us what the deal is. Then we plan. We'll know what to do. Uh, and so we will be able to stabilize. I hope they'll invest the money they already have out into the market because there's still incentives for creating jobs. Maybe we pass the American Jobs Act, we'd be able to do that. Let me just finish on this point uh, to my dear friend. Um, I want to remind everybody that tomorrow is World AIDS Day. And I want people that uh, over uh, the uh, lifetime uh, up to the end of 2005, 38.6 million people worldwide uh, living, were living with AIDS. And more than 25 million people have died of AIDS since 1981. And so when a lot of people say, oh, that's behind us. What is she talking about uh, HIV AIDS? Well, I know when I go into the Thomas Street Clinic in Houston, Texas, that is not the case, and I congratulate them for what they have done. But there are approximately a million to a million two positive individuals living in the United States and 56,000 new infections every year. Why am I saying that? Because when we think of discretionary funding, it's a, it's a, a nebulous term. What does it mean? Uh, Mr. Reed rightly asked my good friends on the other side of the aisle, what spending cuts are you talking about? It was the intervention of the federal government with the Ryan White Treatment Act uh, and the research regarding HIV AIDS that have helped people like those who are hemophiliacs and others uh, in the large population. That means that everybody gets it. It's not a stigma. Everybody is possibly susceptible to it. Where would we be without that intervention of the federal government? So in the shadow of honoring uh, those who have lost their lives in this almost terrible uh, epidemic, which is tomorrow, to be able to salute and thank those who have done the research and improve the quality of life of those who uh, are now living with HIV uh, and AIDS, and saying uh, to those millions who lost their lives that we will not forget. That's what this debate is about. It is about rental income for poor people, and by the way, those poor people are working people, uh, it is uh, about uh, supplemental nutrition dollars for women and children. Uh, I, I've never, I would not call them the deadbeats of life. Uh, those who speak on the floor about national security and border security, do you realize that we'd be cutting $823 million from Customs and Border Protection? Uh, these are the roles and responsibilities of the federal government. And so rather than uh, take, uh, if you will, uh, a frivolous pr perspective on this, rather than tell people that you can't do anything before 2013, rather than suggest that entitlements are laid upon the table as the, on the altar as a sacrifice, just tell the American people the truth. Let's just tell them the truth. Entitlements is not the issue. And if so, cool heads can sit down and engage the American people and tell us how many seniors in nursing homes do we want to throw out in the street? What, what options do they have? Maybe we'll begin to talk about home care. That's okay, but you don't talk about home care overnight. And then, so you have to be deliberative. And then who wants to make a fuss about Medicare when it's solvent until 2024? Again, abusing the information given to the American people. Who wants to make a fuss about Social Security when it's solvent? And it's about, you, you earned it. So to Mr. Scott, my uh, call today is to uh, thank you for giving us 
uh, this opportunity. As I speak to my constituents, I indicate that we're just immersed in uh, these kinds of discussions. Uh, and um, I'm hoping, and as I said, I am an optimist and uh, believe that uh, cool heads will come together. We'll be back next week. And we'll be talking to our constituents over the next couple of days. Uh, I'm looking at a sheet that has a number of revenue options that uh, I'm going to be studying. That means that I am not in any way um, taking the serious work of the deficit for granted. But I do want to put a firewall around hysteria and put the hysteria over here and get to work with eliminating the tax cuts for the top 2 percent, give everybody a $250,000 income tax break, and then in a thoughtful manner look at the a number of ways uh, and join with the President on saying it's valuable to do something about infrastructure. It's valuable to count in the war savings and to bring our troops home, heroes and with honor. Um, I pass an amendment to do that, to honor every returning soldier that comes home. So I thank the gentleman from uh, Virginia uh, for his service, but also for the work that you've been doing on this issue. And I think um, we look like we're, I hope I'm not too animated, but let me end on a very quiet note. I am calm and I believe uh, that um, we can be deliberative and responsible uh, in our thinking, and I look forward to that occurring. Uh, I yield uh, to the gentleman. Thank you. And, Mr. Speaker, just in, uh, in closing, the gentlelady pointed out um, that bad things happen if we go over the cliff. Bad things are going to happen if we get serious about deficit reduction. The only thing you can, only way you can deal with deficit reduction is to raise somebody's taxes or to cut somebody's spending. It's going to be uh, unpleasant and until you recognize that arithmetic reality, uh, we're not going to make any progress. You're not going to be popular doing deficit reduction. Uh, but we have choices to make, and we can do this without cutting Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, the social safety net, or investments in our future. We have had, um, uh, we have a list of ways of doing it with specifics. Now, we're willing to compromise, of course, but you can't compromise with reducing the size of government with unspecified cuts. Until you specify them, you can't have a discussion. You can't have unspecified revenues that don't involve rate increases. We don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you can't compromise on that because no proposal to compromise. We need specifics, and we cannot um, allow people to get, try to get past a scheme where you, where you extend the tax cuts at a huge price and then come back next year and try to pay for them and notice that you're so broke you have to cut Social Security and Medicare. Uh, if, you're gonna, if that's your plan, let's get it all, all up front. Uh, let's, we're going to cut Social Security and Medicare in order to provide for some tax cuts. I think most people would say no. Leave Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid alone. If you've got some money left over from tax cuts, fine. But we do not want Social Security Medicare and Medicaid uh, to be uh, 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 cut in order to provide for tax cuts. Now, when they start talking about, well, increase the age or reduce the COLA, those are just ways of reducing benefits. And so we need to make that threshold, question, threshold statement that we're not going to allow uh, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid to be used to pay for any of these tax cuts, and we're not allow a scheme to take place where we, where we all agree on some tax cuts first and then find out that because of the size of the tax cuts, we got to cut Social Security uh, and, 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 and Medicare. Uh, let's figure this all out at once. It can be done. There's some tough choices that have to be made, and the Congressional Black Caucus has shown how those choices can be made with specifics in, the, in their various documents. So, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the opportunity to um, have this moment to uh, discuss the uh, Congressional Black Caucus position on the fiscal cliff. And I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back.